This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Okay. All right. Looks like we're good to go, Lorraine, so we'll get started. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. It's my pleasure to introduce Lorraine Cecino Murphy. She is the department chair of the Associate uh, of Science and Nursing, ASN is the acronym, correct, Lorraine? Yep. Mm -hmm. Also the, uh, an associate professor at St. Luke's in Sioux City. And um, I will let her share more specifics about her career, but I always like to share some fun things about um, students, especially when we get to the point of being the chair. So Lorraine is our um, resident Prezi professional. I love Prezi's. Um, she has mastered it, so and she she is going to be doing a Prezi today. So it's, it's fun to watch. She mentored everybody and tried to teach us how to do Prezi, and I did one that was very clunky, but she's got the knack. I don't know. It must be a gene or something that you inherit. Uh, she's also a runner, so she said she ran this morning to burn off some stress. So we're going to have a stress-free uh, presentation, and she is a lover of rock music. She goes to all kinds of con concerts, and she is also has a special gift for finding the perfect picture to go along with any mood. So, <laughs> so Lorraine, is there anything else you'd like to share about your professional role? Uh, no, I'm not really. Um, I, I've enjoyed being. I've been the department chair for about four years now, and I've really I appreciate. I, I really like that role too, where I get to work with students and faculty. All right, well, I will turn it over to her, then she's going to be talking about her topic, Grit, Academic Success, and Nursing Students. So take it away, away Lorraine. All right, well, I always say one of my most precious commodities is time. So I do appreciate you all taking time out to see my dissertation proposal defense. Um, I'd like to especially thank Dr. Barnes, my chair of my committee, and um, Dr. Broderson for their countless hours of helping me getting to this point. Um, I'd also like to thank Dr. Whitaker for his uh, expertise and uh, serving as the external reviewer getting me to this point. So my topic is uh, academic success in nursing students and, uh, and GRIT. Uh, it's been kind of a culmination. My, my main focus starting this doctoral journey ha was always about nursing students and their academic success. Mm -hmm. And so everything that I did built upon that. And in that journey, I came across the concept of grit. And uh, grit, you know, you might think of as, you know, getting down and dirty and in the dirt and working hard. And, and in some ways, the concept of grit is, is that. Uh, but it has become a kind of popularized concept uh, in the literature and uh, mostly in um, sociology uh, and psychology, uh, like psychological literature, uh, and kind of really just exploring what does grit look like uh, with this this newly defined concept of passion and perseverance to pursue long-term goals. That's how it's defined in the psychological uh, literature. Um, and how does it look in, uh, to nursing student success? So that's really the purpose is does it, is there a relationship between uh, grit and nursing student success? We know that nursing school, whether you talk about undergraduate or graduate, it does require dedication, hard work, preparation, not unlike a painter or sculptor, you know, where you're building something, you're, you're building a career and it's lifelong learning. And so uh, that takes passion and perseverance. And so that's why um, the concept of grit and nursing students really, you know, and, and their success and, and what does that look like? And as I looked at the literature, there really wasn't a lot out there um, related to undergraduate and graduate nursing students, especially graduate nursing students. So that's why my focus is going to be on graduate and undergraduate nursing students in one college of nursing. So Angela Duckworth, uh, her work, uh, she defined grit in the last 12 years, um, has done a lot of work uh, studying it. Um, looking at its connections and, and ultimately defined it as passion and perseverance to pursue long-term goals. 
It's about stamina. Talk about, you know, running and it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's sometimes goals, att attaining goals uh, over years and or a goal over several years, not just day, you know, day by day, but sometimes it does take the day by day to get to that point, but really working hard to achieve goals and making um, those goals a reality. So why is that important in nursing students? Well, perseverance, passion, grit, they, they really are all, uh, they are important to, um, to nursing school. It's very rigorous. We know that, um, and, and whether we talk about undergraduate or uh, graduate nursing students, um, ultimately we know that there are shortages in nurses. Um, they are worse in some areas than others. And so any student who starts a nursing program, we, it's important for them to finish, not only for their own goals, but for what we know that, to add to the uh, shortages we know that are, uh, looming, and the, especially in some of the um, higher population uh, states. We know there's a shortage of educators, as nurse educators as well, and we need uh, we need nurses who complete their degree and get a bachelor's degree to move on um, to become educators if that's the, what they desire, so that advanced degrees can contribute to that. We know also that uh, nurses with advanced degrees do improve the, the delivery of care and whether it be through practice, whether it be through their own education or continuing education or educating others. And then they're also needed through leadership. So again, we, those nursing students who start a program, you know, we want them to complete that. So, you know, what does grit look like in those students? Um, and how does that how does that influence maybe their success in a nursing program? So that kind of led really um, well, when we're talking about that, we're talking about nursing student retention and attrition and therefore uh, preventing it. We want to how can we prevent nursing student retain or how can we prevent them uh, retain them in a program and prevent their attrition from a program? We know that in nursing, uh, for nursing programs, success is linked to positive mindset and pers uh, persistence. And those concepts are often talked about when we talk about grit. So um, positive mindset is has a connection with grit and so does persistence. And so, you know, achieving goals, um, how does that look? How, how can we uh, work with students to retain them and prevent them from uh, and successful in a program. Typically in the nursing literature, you see that uh, academic success is largely connected to academics, grade point averages, cumulative grade point averages, nursing course grades, science course grades. They're very much linked to success and we kind of know that. And that's a lot of times why uh, admission criteria are surround that. But then we're also looking at the non-academic, just like at Allen College, they do the holistic admission um, uh, acceptance. And so uh, looking at some personality traits. So in some of the literature, they looked at resilience, self-concept, motivation, self-efficacy, not with much consistency, not like the academic piece. And um, so uh, the other piece to the academics is academic progression. And I think it's important when we talk about academic progression to kind of define what we mean. Uh, because there are lots of, when I say retention and attrition, some people use those words interchangeably. I think that when we talk about academic progression, there's lots of variations. Ultimately, someone who starts a program, and uh, can you see my little arrow? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, good, because I wasn't sure if you could. So, so ideal retention is that student who starts a program and finishes it without any um, withdrawing or failing a course. They, they basically follow the progression, the normal progression of that core, uh, plan of study to graduation. 
A stop out retention is any student who may uh, withdraw from a course or withdraw from or, or uh, not successfully meet the academic progression requirements. So in undergraduate, that's a C or above. In graduate, that's a little higher, B or above. Um, so it kind of depends on the program. They have different parameters. It could also be clinical um, failure, uh, something like that. But ultimately, stop out retention is there. They haven't left the program. They're still in the program. They're still persevering, and they're still uh, just still going. Uh, but they just had kind of a stop out. Voluntary attrition are those students who withdraw from the college for reasons, usually personal reasons. Uh, maybe the program just wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Maybe it wasn't the right fit, but it also could be family reasons, financial reasons, all of those reasons that are not ac academic. Now involuntary attrition uh, is are those people who are academically dismissed or it could be for professional probation or professional reasons code of conduct. So, you know, in my plan, um, we are, um, I'm looking at uh, students in one semester uh, and, and the design of the, of the study is so that I start at the beginning of a semester to try to capture anyone who uh, at, at the end of the semester who try to capture as many students as possible related to attrition. We can see the ideal retention, we can see the uh, stop out retention, but um, trying to, to capture that involuntary and uh, voluntary attrition uh, is the reason for the design. And I'll talk a little bit more about design in a second. So grit is a, considered a non-academic personality trait. It is a personality trait that uh, is not been looked at a lot in nursing students. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it has been looked at in various academic settings or um, and, and um, ac it has been linked to academic success outcomes. It has also been linked to retention, but um, not necessarily retaining in, in a program, more retention of in, in marriage and um, in uh, military training or mili uh, real rigorous military um, courses and things like that. Uh, grittier people, uh, not dirty people, um, I, just people with more grit uh, I, I have been have higher uh, educational attainment and advancement and I've seen that. And then that there is some uh, in the literature just that grit is necessary for nursing school, you know, that passion, perseverance, just really, you know, striving to achieve goals. Uh, it's necessary in practice and professional development. And to me, grit is kind of the things that you don't see, um, you know, that persistence. Um, academic success is what you see. And so kind of looking at what you can see and what you can't see. Uh, we can see someone's grades, but we don't really know what's going on under that. So here is kind of really the, the extent of what I could find uh, related with grit and nursing students. Um, Koenigsman, that's a uh, dissertation that was looking at minority students and what are the barriers to success for nursing students. So they also looked at grit, but grit was kind of almost to, to me in that research was a little bit of an afterthought, but what they did find was that there were higher levels of grit among minority students. They scored in the 70, 70th percentile of, um, of, of the, the score for the the grit scale. For Robinson, that's another dissertation, and they uh, she was looking at uh, grit levels and nursing course engagement. And how was how connected was that? Now, nursing course engagement was connected to academic success, but they weren't really um, making those um, direct connections. But they did find that higher levels of grit uh, were related to nursing course engagement. And then the Stoffel and Kane, that's that was more of a systematic review of comparing resilience and grit and looking at what literature is out there. And really, there is a bit more about resilience in health professions education than there is in grit and kind of really identified that there is this um, gap in understanding of a grit in health professions education. Uh, but that it may uh, that in what they found that it may contribute to success despite having um, a lower intelligence level. And it also found that in the grit literature that people with a lower intelligence had higher levels of grit. So, uh, you know, that might be uh, another component to academic success. I'm just not sure. 
So uh, my literature review really contributed to my research questions because in the literature, um, they they looked at various uh, the variable variables that I'm be looking at and so ultimately my research questions are looking at that relationship of academic success of undergraduate and graduate nursing students with age gender ethnicity prior degree attainment programs of study and number of semesters in a nursing program and uh, so in some of the research, they, there were different disciplines that were looked at in uh, for education. They looked at engineering students, they looked at pharma pharmacy students. And so these kind of concepts of number of semesters in, this, in the program came up. So that's why I added it to my study. Uh, also looking at the differences of program study when you look at undergraduate and graduate nurses students, you're, you have, there's very uh, many different um, programs in that, in that. And so looking at, are there differences between the programs? In past research, prior degree attainment has also been linked to academic success. So, you know, what does that look like in nursing students? And then also the one of the main components is looking at that relationship between grit and academic success in these uh, students. So in a, uh, Age was a, uh, one of the factors too that uh, found in the research that the older you are, the higher your grit is, so higher level grit. So as far as academic success, I had to define what is that? What am I looking at exactly? So this kind of outlines that I'm looking at cumul cumulative grade point average. I'm looking, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm looking at nursing grades, but basically to see how are they progressing. You know, are they are they achieving based on the nursing program the grade requirements? Kind of yes or no. That will help me identify the ideal retention, the stop out retention, um, and then ultimately that will both of those things will contribute to the involuntary attrition. Um, and then um, then the voluntary attrition will be just information gathered from you know are, are the the students who started the program still in the program and, and reasons why if they're voluntary, not in the program. Why, you know, why, why do this? Well, um, understanding these relationships will help guide any strategies we use in nursing education, whether it be undergraduate or graduate, uh, maybe help guide some of our strategies for retain, retaining students, helping them complete the program, uh, even, you know, get kind of putting into place if it's if it's relevant, if there are relationships to kind of start planting that seed in undergraduate uh, education, because we know that nurses are lifelong learners and we want them to uh, strive for uh, higher degrees and advanced degrees to help the profession. And so Again, if there are significant relationships, they can really help guide some of those strategies. We're always looking for different strategies to use, and I, I think that if, if if there are relationships, it can be useful to kind of guide um, um, data-driven decisions related to these strategies. So my methods, there are methods to my madness. Uh, I plan to do an exploratory descriptive study, a quali quantitative study. So really because there's such a lack of understanding of grit in nursing students, it's gonna be a bit exploratory. I'm not really sure I have a feeling of what I'm gonna find based on what I've you know, found in, in my literature review, but I'd like to describe it. I'd like to describe it in the nursing student uh, and in that population and undergraduate and graduate. Uh, it's cross-sectional, so I'm only really looking at one, you know, moment, if you will, in time or one time frame. Um, the participants who do agree to participate in the study, they will uh, have to agree to allow me access to their student records. Um, they will also, once they agree to that, they will complete an eight-item survey that uh, will is basically the grit scale, or it's called the short grit scale or grit S. Um, that was developed by Duckworth and her team, and uh, it looks at total grit, but then it also has two subcomponents of grit, uh, perseverance of effort and consistency of interest. And that perseverance of effort, that's really been kind of in the research, that's really been kind of the link to academic success. How our consistency of interest is linked to retention. So that's where those kind of 
piece is really, or I'm really intrigued to see what that might look like. Uh, I, the demographic data that I uh, will be looking at that are part of the research questions um, will be exported from the student data system by the coordinator. Uh, so I'm, I'm really working in collaboration, uh, really keeping in mind the importance of the student's privacy, of their information, considering FERPA guidelines. Um, so that information will be exported by the uh, data system <laughs> And then the uh, survey that we're using, we, uh, I'll be using Allen College's SurveyMonkey um, with core, in the coordination uh, with um, the coordinator for institutional research and effectiveness. I might have that mixed up, sorry. Um, and then, um, uh, so she will be exporting that data and kind of combining the demographic and academic data and the survey data together and then de-identifying it. So then I'll have all of the data to, uh, to look at, but then I will keep the student's information private or as private as can be. So this design does allow for that privacy. Um, we kind of, you know, we did go around and around about, you know, I could ask the students about, you know, what their GPA is. And sometimes you're not, you, you don't get the most accurate information when you ask students about their grade point average. And, um, and, and I wanted to get the most, um, accurate and valid information. It does ease, ease the burden uh, of responses for the students. So the uh, survey, we, we've tested it out. It takes like three minutes for the students to complete. And uh, you know, so kind of easing that burden for the student to get them to participate uh, really uh, was kind of why we designed, why we worked together on, uh, and it was designed this way. So uh, data collection, as I, as I talked earlier, the data collection plan is to um, start collecting data in the fall, um, the, basically to deploy the survey uh, at the very beginning of the fall semester. Um, and what that will allow is to capture more, more students before maybe they ha start having academic issues. Um, they can withdraw from the study at any point, and so that information will be there. So uh, that there's there's that's a, a limitation, but we'll you know kind of work with that. Um, once we get the survey, once the survey data is uh, uh, received, then we can export some of the uh, the demographic data and maybe start doing some of the initial work on um, analyzing the the survey and and um, the uh, the validity of it and, and the, the data and start to maybe start putting some of that together. And, uh, and then the academic piece will be collected at the, at the end of the semester when we know what grades are and we know um, how students have uh, done throughout the semester. So then, oops. oh, sorry. So then the last component will be in the spring, coming soon to uh, the data analysis and conclusions and recommendations, um, putting all of that together and uh, uh, hopefully bringing you results uh, in the spring of 2020. How'd I do for time? Good job, Lori. <laughs> I am not known for being short-winded. <laughs> Minutes on the dot. Delivered. 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 I'll fire in. Hi, Lorraine. This is Jared. Hey. Hi. Uh, so hi. Um, so my question. I actually have several, but you know, I'll let my colleagues ask theirs. First question I have is. Um, where where are you going to get your survey participants from? What what's your selection process? Is it going to be from single institutions, multiple institutions, hospital affiliated colleges, community colleges? Can you just talk a little bit about really what where you're going to get your pool of participants from? Sure. Well, um, the plan is uh, there'll be Allen College students. So and basically just gathering um, the information of all the undergraduate and graduate. Uh, nursing students, really just the masters and the DNP. I kind of made a decision I wouldn't tap into the EDD students um, 
because of uh, I wanted it to be connected to nurses, and so um, so that's that's where my population will be. Okay. So. Um, so have you given consideration and I and I and I think everybody in this room will agree that when, when you're at the stage where you're at in in the research process I was there I can guarantee pretty much everybody else will agree that sometimes getting data from research participants doesn't go exactly as we planned I think sometimes we think that yeah, I'll get two or 300 responses, they'll come in over the course of five to six weeks and everybody will be very happy. And I think, have you given consideration about the request for the students, um, their, their student file, how that's going to affect your ability to get participants? I'm sure you've discussed it with your committee chairs and your committee members, but from an outside perspective, that that sort of gives me pause about what that's going to do to the people that self-select into your study because you know that that that's some sensitive information that you're asking to to have the students agree to let you view and I'm just you know really talk about the process that you've gone through with your committee about really you know the expectations for how this is going to affect your participants well, sure. That that is that's uh, that is kind of at the forefront of of everything we've been trying to do. I think we've we've spent a lot of time working through the details of how are we going to de-identify the information. And essentially, the people who will have access to the sensitive information uh, have the rights for that. And I think maybe explaining that explain uh, for the students and have that information. You know, kind of prevalent or, and, and upfront, and in, in letting them know that that information will not affect their grades, they will not affect their status at the college. They, they, uh, their participation will have no impact. We also have in a, not that it's going to be a big incentive, but there'll be uh, an incentive for a drawing to participate. Now that doesn't, you know, doesn't um, downplay the importance of their their grades and and that information. Uh, you know, really just stressing the, the point that um, the information I get, I will not be able to link to them and that the, the people who have access to that information um, are really just collecting it and, and, and are not making it. A, that's maybe sometimes part of their role in that in, in, at the college. Did I answer your question? Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. But I, I really part, sort of the part B to that question is then yeah. wh what what is your alternative or contingency plan if if you if you really don't get a solid number of participants to materialize sort of what what's your backup plan? You know, let's say you're you're getting into mid to late October and you've only had like mm -hmm. 50 or 60 agreed, you know, um, participants, you know, really what's your plan to get that data collected so you can start, you know, uh, synthesizing and writing in the spring yeah i think that um i mean I, I i think that we will be sending out reminders and maybe um maybe encouraging um you know students to participate again they can self-select um we have calculated a g power that um we would need about um 73 participants if uh so i think we've kind of work that out. I think we can also look at it as a limitation, uh, but, um, you know, really um, continue to reach out to students and, and uh, you know, maybe explaining a bit more about how, um, uh, about the, why it might be important to look at that and for them to participate. Lorraine, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you, I thought you also were planning on maybe if, if, um you didn't have like 73 uh, yeah. students that maybe you would extend your data analysis or data collection into the following semester i or did i dream that i thought i saw that somewhere. no i mean that's definitely something we could consider and and that might give a better um you know capture a little bit more um we could probably even capture uh more students if we we had a full some um academic year 
Um, so no, I mean, that's something we could consider. Um, I think that's, that's all part of the research process in uh, adjusting to, you know, uh, the data we get and, and, and how do we, uh, when do we stop collecting data? When do we, when do we continue? Uh, I think that's part of the process. Well, this is Jared again. You know, I, I think looking at it, and I, I will say, I think this is a fantastic study because the more information that we have about, really, if we can get something that that can help us better identify students who might attrition out either on their own or you know voluntarily or involuntarily, I think this is very valuable, and you know, it it definitely adds to the the research database for for the profession. With that being said. How, how are you going to handle the attrition piece? Now, you know, at, for, as from an administrative standpoint, I can sit and tell you that I hope that 0% of our students attrition out during the semester that you are conducting your research, but the odds are in the favor that we'll have at least some who do attrition either voluntarily or involuntarily. Um, you know, really, how, how, are, how do you plan to address that? If you get a lower than, than expected numbers of attritions, you know, do you again have a contingency plan for how how would that look if, as you're trying to synthesize your data into into sort of that attrition piece? What are you going to look at as far as um, you know an expectation for the amount of students you need to attrition to have some valuable data? Well, you know that's a good point. Um, I think that you know the other piece is the, the retention and also success in nursing courses so you know i think that maybe that because it's looking at because i'm looking at retention and attrition um we may be able to just uh you know we can just be able to explain what that might look like what does the what is the level of grit look like in those students um you know being it being a small population um size uh, so I think that um, that that is that is definitely something that might come up. That and and you know there really is a small population of doctoral students. So there's you know that's probably um, you know that is something that um, I'm uh, I might have to um, aggregate the data with the the graduate students. So maybe aggregating a, a bit more data. Um, you know, just looking at them as a whole. Okay. Well, I, I think this is, I mean, beyond the scope of your study, but I, I certainly think in, in chapter five, when you get to the point of writing, rec writing recommendations, I mean, to me, if you could get somebody to do a, qual a quantitative study, no, I'm sorry, qualitative study yeah. Yeah. about students who did attrition and then start really getting at the crux of how grit played into their attritioning out of a nursing program. I think that'd be a good thing to put in your chapter five as far as recommendations for future research on to do a uh, qualitative study on this. Because I, I think really getting at, you know, the essence or hearing it directly from the students' voices about why or how grit played into their ability to progress or attrition would be beneficial as well. I would agree, and I think that there really is such a lack of data that this would just lend to that. Anything found here would also contribute to that. I would say in this journey, I've come up with lots of different different projects that I could avenues I can go. I definitely see that 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 would be a great uh, offshoot and um, an additional thing to look at. Hi, Lorraine. This is Kendra. I have a question for you about um, categorizing your undergraduate students. Are you planning to look at accelerated versus traditional students as two different categories? I have my own assumptions about what you might find between those yeah. two, but. Um, yeah, I suppose. I think that program of study was one of the um, uh, research questions, you know, academic success and plan, uh, plan of study. So I would say that, yes, that is the plan, uh, but I probably would have to aggregate some of that just maybe with uh, the grit. Um, we'll have to kind of see how that shows up or how many respond to or participate. But uh, I, I would agree. Uh, I, I think that um, 
Um, so yes, I'm going to be looking at kind of the separate different programs because they are different, but I think that some of that at some point will, might have to be aggregated. Okay. And if you're, um, if you're ready to start data collection, you certainly could start this summer because we have lots of students in class in the summer. So I'm not sure if you're, you know, what your goal was for starting in the fall, but. She hasn't been through IRB yet, has she? She hasn't been through IRB yet. Okay. Close, she's, she's close. Okay. So um, we picked all because that was like a natural break point. We wanted to look at one subset at a time. Yeah. This one, is one thing I'll throw out, Lori, um, that I just want to ask you too is I know you did quite an extensive literature review, and yeah. um, just from working on the paper with you, the permission to use your instrument from uh, Duckworth came along with a disclaimer that it not not be so in your literature review, have you found any institutions or um, healthcare programs that are using any kind of grit scale as part of the admissions process? That's a good question. Uh, no, I was actually, I was at the HLC conference last year and um, I can't remember the speaker, but the speaker was talking about, he was at Goucher University. Anyway, um, he was talking about he was giving the grid scale to his students. Now they weren't using it as a mission criteria. And I think, like you said, that's that's kind of a, a stipulation with the use of that scale. Uh, but uh, in in K through 12, there was a lot of rumblings about you know using the grit scale and, and trying to promote grit in, in K through 12. So I, I think that it's uh, it does have its limitations, but I think that um, yeah I, I haven't seen anybody using it as a criteria. Uh, only uh, you know looking at holistic review in and kind of this whole journey of academic success. I I did some work looking at holistic review admissions, and uh, they were looking at you know characteristics, and so. You know, but what characteristic is important, and and that really uh, that that secret sauce is not figured out yet, and uh, so I don't think that would be that that probably wouldn't be the you know the end goal for a lot of a lot of admission uh, for a lot of colleges for admission. And I'll just throw two um, a piggybacking on Kendra's question: the accelerated start at the end of May, right? One yeah. cohort does, yeah. cohort. and then another one starts. Yeah. Because, and, you know, and this is the good thing about the proposal of the bits, Lorraine, is we do have come up with um, extra ideas. You are, you are almost ready to submit to IRB. Theoretically, she could be ready to yeah. collapse. She said because her and would be expedited. So, so it wouldn't have, have to go for committee. Yeah, yeah. it wouldn't have to break for committee. I would say, Lorraine, if we can get it done, that would be a great um, extension to your study because then we could look at the summer admits as well as in the fall admits too. And, and on that, I believe the summer cohort's fairly small. Is it? Yeah. Summer, accelerate 30. 32. 32. 32. Okay, so it's not exactly a pilot group, but it is still a place that you could find to. Well, plus, plus there's the hybrid group that's small, which the is hybrid group. that's an additional nine. Yeah. yeah, so I was thinking more like a hybrid group, which is nine students would be an excellent pilot. Uh, and I didn't know that you couldn't use the data, but if you got problems, that's the place to fix it. Yeah, I would say more data, data is, is, yeah. is better, and, Lorraine, and if we're ready to rock and roll, I would say, let's yeah. do that. Yeah, you can do a small release and then a bigger release. Uh, no, I, I, I just want to say, now obviously you've already gotten my input, so I don't want to add any more. Uh, you've already dealt with me. Um, no, I would say actually what was, I think, a good use for this possibly in your conclusions when you're writing your chapter five, far in the future, um, is to say you couldn't use it for admissions or at least that particular tool, but using it from a student success standpoint to identify mm -hmm. students who potentially could need help after admission uh, right. as a way to, again, keep it above right. board and not, not use it as a filtering before they enter, but to maybe pre-identify students who might need help. After the yeah, I, I absolutely agree because the 
the more help that we can get students and the earlier we can get them the assistance they need, I, th there's a higher likelihood of perseverance and, and retention. Right. Um, Cause sometimes I'm just afraid that we're not getting them the help they need soon enough. And if, by the time we get them the help that it might be a little bit too late. Lori, do you want to comment to the group? You did quite an extensive literature review that ended up being, it was really interesting. And Britt is one of those, I mean, Duckworth has, she's run with it. She's got a book. It's one of those topics that is very pervasive right now. But comment on what happened when you really started focusing on healthy healthcare population or healthcare students. Comment on kind of that funnel of the literature that, that we discovered and that you, you worked through it. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there is a growing uh, literature on grit, and they are looking at lots of different populations. Uh, but really, there was, uh, it seemed like the pharmacy um, students, it was, that's kind of where it was funneled down. And they, they've been, uh, the pharmacy education has been doing a little bit more with grit and really kind of highlighting how uh, they were finding that with the pharmacy students that they tended to excel or do more, uh, do um, different, um, uh, they would just excel more in their education. Uh, so that was uh, the large part of what, what I found in that. But um, in um, resilience is, uh, and th th there was kind of that comparison with grit and resilience. Um, resilience was linked to academic success in graduate students in one study, but not undergraduate students. So I, thought, I found that very kind of interesting. Um, those weren't either, those were, um, those were, I believe those were um, nursing students that they were looking at resilience and they were looking at undergraduate and graduate nursing students. So that kind of also sparked, you know, how different is grit to resilience and um, and I think in, in, in a lot of ways, it's that stamina and, and um, achieving goals. But um, is that what you mean, Brenda? I mean, I, I know that, um, you know, yeah, I really kind of- impressive grid, uh, literature grid, but it was interesting from my perspective and how much you uncovered when you looked at uh, K through 12, high school, call it liberal, liberal arts college, but when you really started focusing on the healthcare side, there was very, very little literature. There was, you found the occasional presentation, but nobody has done anything to the extent that you are proposing at this point. Yeah, it's really been just dissertations, those two dissertations and then that one um, systematic review where you can find that in the, the grit literature was, you know, like I said, engineering students, pharmacy students, uh, um, physics classes, it was, it was K through 12. It, uh, they, they really have looked at a lot of different populations. And then they've also looked at just the general population. There were spelling bee contestants uh, and how to, you know, whether, you know, who has grit in uh, or more grit and how does grit influence uh, their success in spelling bee uh, competitions. Uh, there was a, there's a lot done with the military, and as a matter of fact, um, Duckworth and her work, and then kind of uh, kind of uh, shoot offs of that, have looked at um, West Point graduates and can, uh, uh, candidates or cadets. That's what they are. Uh, that there is this, you know, it takes a lot to get into West Point. There is academics, there's physical, there's mental, there's all of this stuff they have to go through and they have to get some, you know, a, a senator's letter and all that. So they finally get to West Point and they, uh, and then there's this, I don't know what they call it, like um, hell week or something like that. There's this week or two weeks or whatever they have to do where there's all this other physical, mental um, uh, things that they do with them. And, uh, and it's only the people that is, so the only people that survive that have high levels of grit. And so it doesn't even matter what their academics were that they've, and actually, if you want to talk about admission criteria, that ends up being, they do give these cadets this, this scale to see, you know, how much grit they have, because that has been 
linked in, in several studies that in order to get through the mental and the physical, you know, you can do everything ahead of time, but it's this flat, this week of uh, intense training the, that they have more retention in the program in, in the first year of West Point and more retention in um, the, after that, that week. So after all that, some people just, you know, they, after all the stuff they went through to get into West Point, some people drop out after that first week. So, and it's only people with higher levels of grit that, that survive it. So not that I'm comparing nursing school to West Point, you know, Hell Week or whatever it's called, but I, I can't think what it's called, Beast, the Beast or something like that. But I can definitely relate, haven't been in the army, but maybe a little bit, but um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it definitely is intriguing to, to know, you know, kind of see what, well, uh, you know, is, is this something that maybe nursing students have more of? I'd be really interested, uh, the one study that uh, looked at engineering students, they looked at, you know, what semester they were in and what program they were in for engineering. And so, uh, like the electrical engineering, they, they were, um, they had higher levels of grit than, say, computer engineering. Sorry, but you know that's what they found. Uh, you know the rigors of the program. You know had an influence. Really, there was a link to, to grit and the rigor of a program. And also, they found that you know that grit kind of remained a, a bit stable um, for those students. So uh, you know, does that you know that could be another study? You know, looking at you know more um, a longitudinal study on you know. This, that Lorraine, I have a question. Uh, yeah. This is Peggy Furch. Um, I think it would kind of be advantageous that um, the data is only coming from Allen College. That would be good to have another institution to grab the data from, too, because we're only looking at grit for one culture set, admission set. It'd be interesting to know if how that correlates with even data from another university, college, institution, um, just to consider that aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that that well, that was we did th we did consider that, um, and I think for um, because we don't have a uh, in, uh, institutional review board that's across the colleges, or there's so many variables and variations of programs and that. Because um, I had considered even, you know, St. Luke students, uh, and, and so we just kind of narrowed the focus just to kind of um, make it a bit more manageable, uh, and uh, but and and not to, you know, uh, jeopardize the the results, but just kind of to keep it uh, keep a, a more narrow focus for right now. But definitely was some, the, the great idea, and definitely something that we had considered, um, and. Um, so I appreciate your, uh, that um, feedback. Yeah, and on that, I know that we had uh, another doctoral student from Peoria at this, uh, and they were talking about having an attrition rate over 50% for some mm. And so again, I, wow. I think if you needed a second site, I think you would get a very interrupted party uh, yeah. in that. So again, if that, if it comes to pass that you need a second site, I would knock on their door first. Yeah, and I have uh, relationships with um, the, the other colleges. I mean, I think that's, you know, that was something that I had considered that with, you know, being in a uh, uh, an organization with the sister colleges, that's, that's, that's the added benefit. This is Joanna Lorraine. And just to piggyback on that, Peoria has gen eds. Um, so keep in mind at Allen College, we're upper division. So we're not mm -hmm. seeing the typical uh, involuntary attrition um, mm -hmm. that you might see at Peoria because they're not usually homesick anymore. Yeah. Um, things like that we don't have to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Peoria. Yeah, that, it may not be a perfect match. Yeah, because we have nobody, everybody who's walking our door generally has two and a half, three years of college. But Trinity. Yeah. Trinity might, is similar. And I don't know if, if your student makeup is more of the 18 
to, to 20 group yeah. as well. Um, we're more 20 to 24 yeah. for undergrads. But you could always address those differences in your study. Yeah. Yeah. Be prepared to talk about it because I mean I that was one of my concerns that I didn't bring up that I think if you ever go to publish I mean I think uh, you know a refereed journal might you know they might have some concerns over the the you know do, does your does your um, sample size adequately represent the population and you know sure. that that's something you'll just have to be able to explain and write to she's considered all of that right Lorraine I mean and I, oh, I mean, absolutely yeah. I mean, I, that, that, and then, then the obvious place to publish this would be a nursing education journal, and they do not just automatically um, reject a single site study. They just request that you publish it as a brief, and some of them don't request that you publish it as a brief. You can still publish it as a. And I think it'll, it'll depend article. on what your results show. I mean, I, I think that this is. I think this is a very publishable study. I, you know, really, um, mm -hmm. like Dr. Broderson said, I mean, it, it's it's going to come down to I think who you choose to publish with and really what their philosophy is on single site studies. If, I mean, if it's a well designed, well executed yeah. study, publishing is not a problem. You'll be able to publish it. So, and I think adding in that extra small cohort that we're we're considering. Dr. Lindgren brought up the data. Yeah. Great point. I think that will yeah. just add, I mean, more data is always better. And, you know, that, that might be an unintended consequence of this study if you have this small cohort that you can follow through both the summer and then into the fall. Right. Um, that's an extra benefit to consider and look at. Right. Considering that there really was no nursing studies that we, we, we developed from the ground up. We didn't have anything that we could really follow, um, so we were, we were. It was our sandbox, if you will. And this is Joanna again. Just also, that group that starts in the summer. We have a group, two groups ending in the summer, as well. So we've got more than just the summer starts. We have the right. summer enders. Right. right. So I would There's say put all that in your IRB. I mean, you can you will have different pots of people. That's a great point. But one thing you will have to explain is you don't want to double survey people. So you want right. You got to figure out, you know, if you're going to repeat this in the fall, we don't want to resurvey people right. Right. who have already been cohort, surveyed. So I think yeah, that's, yeah. That's, we can that's easy to avoid. Get, yeah. get you with email lists based on cohorts. So whatever, if you uh, if you collect data from the accelerated students in the summer, then you would just exclude those from the request to join the study in the fall. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you but just get a new, so we could exclude them by start date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so during the day, but you could get returning students in the fall who yeah. weren't here this summer. Yeah. Also, right. I don't and know, know how you, does it matter. So when they've started, yeah, well, is that going to be a component out, right? of I think that's a good, um, that, that's a good add How many total cohorts we have running at the time, but it's a lot, right? Right. Oh, I know. <laughs> you do have a lot of cohorts at one time. <laughs> a lot of balls in the air. <laughs> yeah. Lorraine, I just wanted to point out one more thing more just for the audience that you had mentioned, you know, that students could withdraw at any time. And that is true until the date is de-identified. And then right. when they request to withdraw, we don't know who to withdraw. So, so, and that is in your, that's in her consent document, that's everything. So, Lisa's done talking. So, Joanna's going to start talking. Um, I was just wondering if you found, um, I did a dissertation similar to this about four years ago, oh. um, mm -hmm. but I hadn't found much on grid at all. It was really uh, persistence. Do you think yeah. really the verbiage has changed or do you think grit is something more extensive than the word persistence or resilience? Those were the words I was finding. No, that's a great question because I think what the grit scale does is it separates out the persistence of effort and the consistency of interest. And so I think it does have a little bit more to it. So it's, a, it's the persistence and the effort and also the consistency of interest. So I, you know, may do I stay interested in what I, you know, set my mind to? 
So uh, I do think it, it might contribute to that and give us a better understanding because I think that I think there are times where students are like, yeah, he was kind of really into it, but now it's like, you know, it, they, the path of least resistance sometimes, you know, it's like, well, it's easier to just, you know, but no, I mean, I guess there, there is a component of student who, who may feel that way. Now, you know, that's not how you started out, uh, but that might be, uh, but that might be those underlying tones. So I, I Persistence was really kind of that, the glue when I looked at academic success in all the theories of academic success that are out there, which there are many, which you probably know about. Um, even in nursing uh, success, there are theories related to persistence. And, and so persistence kind of was really where there's just maybe something there but I think it's a bit more than persistence. It's a consistency of interest too. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're out of questions, Lorraine. Oh, great questions. Almost an hour or so, I, would, I will say we'll conclude unless you have anything else that you'd like to add. No, just uh, thank you everybody for your input and your time. Yes, and one more question. Yep. Oh, sorry, okay. Hi, Lorraine, this is Dana. Um, I, this, I mentioned you probably said this, but I missed it. But once you enter a student into the study, how long are you following them? Okay, yeah, that's a that's a great question. So, um, so the the survey will be deployed, and then they'll get kind of a, a reminder every uh, five days uh, for about two weeks. We're gonna try to you know go for really kind of. We don't want to have it out there swinging in the breeze, but we want to get an adequate amount of uh, responses. Uh, but we might extend it two more weeks if we need to. And so that's kind of part of the plan. Uh, and uh, again, we may be now with some of this feedback, maybe even starting in the summer, we were trying to start. Ultimately, what we wanted to do was get at the beginning of a semester so that we'd capture as many students as possible who would be you know, willing to participate and then kind of following them along in a semester. So, uh, so you know, that, that was kind of the design and, and ultimately what um, the plan. And uh, so once they've completed the survey, they're, you know, uh, we will be um, doing a drawing to kind of incentivize it. It's nothing, too, you know, exciting, but um, uh, for a, a gift card, just to kind of see, you know, give them a little bit of incentive uh, that they might be um, able to win the drawing. So. They do have to agree to participate to be part of that. So that was another component. I mean, everything is voluntary. They don't have to be part of the drawing. They don't have to be in the study. They um, definitely have uh, choices. So um, is the end point then going to be their GPA at the end of that semester? That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, with the bachelor's programs, their course schedules are a little bit different in the accelerated program than in the traditional program. And the class, so some of the accelerated program are taking the first semester, some of the classes we see the most difficulty in. Where the bachelors of uh, the traditional program don't get into those classes until their second semester. So I'm just wondering, is that gonna skew things just a little bit as far as you know the curriculum that they're in? I do think there's going to be a component, uh, whether it be the, you know, the type of undergraduate or, you know, graduate program. I think there, there may be. Um, I think ultimately that's what we're trying to to see, is what you can does control that statistics. Yeah. Well. So, but that that will be something I want. I'm I will be interested in to see it because that's why number of semesters in the program is what the other piece I'm looking at. So then I could kind of really you know give a good description of you know what is the population or the, the the of the participants what does that look like what programs are they in what semester are they in um you get really kind of uh kind of look at that and does does the does the semester the number of semesters they're in a program you know the longer they're in it does that mean they have more grit or not so okay thank you the other thing um i wanted to ask you um, I've done some reading on your um, 
really enjoyed Duckwood's book. <laughs> There's a lot of good information. One thing I found lacking in stuff I looked at, though, is nobody's got any idea how to instill grit, how to teach grit. Have yeah. you found anything in your recent literature reviews? I, I actually found some uh, one nursing um, editorial, I guess you would call it, uh, say like can, saying that it would be important, but there's no data to support it. Just just the concepts in and of itself, the you know working hard. If you, if you uh, looking at some of the, the items in the um, in the scale, you know, are you do you you know keep yourself organized? Do you uh, you know do you uh, set goals for yourself, or do you usually complete things? You know things like that. Uh, I think a lot of it is about, you know, organization and, and really finding your passion and your interest and, and, and ultimately a lot of it's just like, you just keep going even when, even despite obstacles. And um, I think some of that, you know, could be um, uh, nourished. And, and, and so they, they, that is a lot of the K through 12 that teaching grit and trying to get students to, you know, definitely K through 12, you have more time to develop that and and, uh, and in, in a student uh, where you have limited time in um, nursing undergraduate. Or, but I, 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 I'm curious that if it has any relevance in graduate work, that it'd be very important to facilitate and, and to help grow grit, because that's what, that's what uh, Duckworth talks about in her book is growing grit. And how do you grow it? You know, I think that you, you can look at the populations that, uh, or just looking at what what it what it's all about, and and, and kind of really um, encourage those and facilitate those um, those attributes of grit. No magic formula. <laughs> yeah, secret sauce. <laughs> Life experience. Just, Lorraine, this is Lisa. Just a couple more comments, and I swear I will stop talking. Ah, that's um, okay. I just want to back up a little bit. Okay, so the plan is to deploy this survey to the students early in the semester, and then like maybe have a two-week time frame for the survey, and then you said you would consider extending the survey time frame um, longer if if you had a low response rate, and I just just if we do that then you've got to um consider time as a variable because i theoretically it seems like people's grit could change <laughs> over mm -hmm. time i mean maybe they get worn down or they get mm -hmm. and and they might respond differently so you'd have to add time as a variable if you did that which for sure yeah ideally we wouldn't want to extend it but i think uh, we want to leave that at least open to the possibility i know with irb you know they want to know the whole plan and uh, i just kind of want to leave it open at just in case yeah and and the good thing about survey monkey is it records the date and time when they complete yeah. it so you have that variable collected if it was something you needed to look at right so, and i promise i will be quiet now well, you, yeah. no i Appreciate it. Good questions. <laughs> yeah, because myself and Dr. Cruz and so an IRB. So I, I'm not really that worried about this from an IRB standpoint. I think it'll go oh. fairly quickly. It is complex, but you've already worked out all the kinks. So uh, okay. that. Okay. Yeah, we. It, it's a pretty short list, and it, it's over summer. It was like probably Jack. Uh, so yeah. we're about one deep on that, but um, but we'll both be around. She has a question. But and you're you're pretty well. You're you should be able to turn that IRB around quickly. Correct, Lorraine. You have the bulk and of the work to Jack instead. Yeah, I have the application done, and uh, we're just got. Um, I've just got to make a few adjustments to the some documents. Okay. Yeah. Well, she she better be if she's not. She's going to be. Yeah. I yep. There's no, I was. A long I form. I think it'll be good to add in the summer, just as a uh -huh. more data will be. Okay. I think it'll it'll just benefit you, especially you know the the big thing that I want wanted everybody to see was um, I keep looking. Yeah, um, yeah, 
Most of the rooms left, by the way. There's just yeah, they must have another meeting. Yeah, all the leadership team left. We so. just we just didn't have any studies to go off of, so we we're kind of we didn't know what to do. <laughs> this is our our best first attempt, so I think that's a good plan to add in that other group, and we'll look at that in addition to the fall group as well. Okay. Well, and, uh, yeah, I think we're ready even, uh, I mean, we're getting very close to, you know, the, we have to have IRB to do the trial. We were going to trial it out, right? Yeah, but I think just adding that extra, you're going to deploy it for like two weeks starting in this with the summer. The, yeah. the summer session starts the last week of May. Yeah. So we'll just add that in and we'll collect that group. Great. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time for that then. We'll be ready. Yeah, there's different groups, so we'll just we'll sort it out. It's doable. Yeah, well, especially if you use that Des Moines group, the nine of them, as your trial. You could do that as your group. They were supposed to be included in the original study anyway. Right. We were going to, the trial was just going to be to a couple of different people to make sure the yeah. survey was going through. Um, but. And the summer group would be a good trial group for the students to see, make sure that everything, because it's a smaller group. I also want right. to see what your spot rate is going to look like. Yeah, not even. <laughs> you just need a couple of students to do it so that they can mm -hmm. identify any glitches. Yeah, yeah. Any so mm -hmm. I think we can just ask for specific lists. We can ask for the new accelerated groups and the accelerated outgoing apps. I think Joanna gets, she kind of gets it. Yeah, yeah. So, so sure. we'll be able to pull some lists for you. So we wouldn't want to pull, we wouldn't want to do everybody. Like, because yep. there might be graduate students, because we might not capture them, and you don't want to resurvey them. I think it would be good to write it as, you know, the accelerate, looking at the accelerators in the summer is a good trial. Okay. You can look at everybody in the fall because yeah. that would give you some good comparison. Uh, okay, just a, a select group. Could we be calling that our trial? Uh, yeah, what's that? Are we calling that the trial then? Or pilot. Yeah. You pilot? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's really, though, I mean, I, I can stay away from the term pilot. It's really okay, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, sure that there's no yeah. typos or yeah. the students from their perception, but. Yeah, you may want to analyze the data. Yeah. Well, you could analyze it. You can say, you know, we'll run a test with this group. And if it comes back clean, then we'll use that to be, you know, that mm -hmm. data. Because I like, don't see the point in spending the time analyzing the data. You just want feedback from them on was it a yeah. Yeah. survey. We had a trial in place, just a really small trial mm -hmm. to make sure that the, the survey instrument looks fine. And then we can start, like, the, the data trial. Yeah. With Summer group and then do the whole I think you have a couple graduating students. I, I don't know. I can't remember who she's thinking about having test survey. It was a couple of faculty, Allen faculty, and then you were going to send it just to a couple of students, like your students, right? Just to get yeah. All right. Let, let, let's just leave that. Let's not. Let's not monkey with that because I'd rather have that because again, I want you to get every possible survey you can. Jared said it. I said it. I'm worried about sampling. Uh, right. Lisa thinks I'm crazy, but that's okay. I, I, uh, so uh, I think we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards. Some assumptions, but I have a question. But uh, <laughs> I was like, I, I, you don't need to watch mom and dad squabble here behind the scenes. But um, <laughs> so, uh, but that would be my. So I don't need to waste any possible data sources. I would agree with that. I think we all agree on that. Lorraine, any more questions for us, and we'll we'll let you off the hook, and I'll I'll give no, you. No, I think that um, just we we can talk more. Uh, so we have a data trial, and so the data trial will be accelerated, and the trial will be just a few students, faculty, maybe grad. Uh, I I hate to tap into the graduate students because I don't want to resurvey them. Would that Lisa? Do I, would, that? I would put that uh, graduate students in the fall pot. So yeah, yeah. what we're doing is a survey trial and then a, a, da a summer summer student data trial and then a, the full-blown everything in the fall. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. that sounds great. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, Lorraine. All right, we will. Uh, I'll let you go. I'll end it and we'll let you go. And I will be back. Bye. Thanks, Lorraine. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, um, I um, have got it on my calendar for May to 